Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union here in the Union's head office in Kingston, London. We're joined by General Secretary Matt Rack and the Scottish EC member Chris McGlone to discuss a pay proposal that's been put forward by the Scottish employer. Now Matt, this is a pay proposal but of course it represents a further document following a whole series of discussions. What's all the to and fro been about with this issue? Well, we have to go back to June, Tam, uh, where we had a proposal from the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, which we issued to members, we put up on our website. The Executive Council met and recommended members should not accept it. The Scottish Committee of the Union met and agreed with that and also recommended members should not accept it on a number of grounds. The, the funding arrangements, the type of work that was being asked for, the levels of pay, CPD, other issues. Uh, and when we started to discuss with Scottish members, those were the concerns that members on the ground had as well. So at that stage, uh, further discussion started. So that's why it, it, there's been a lot of to and fro since then. OK, Chris, I think up to that point, that was around June of this year. I know you've been the heart of this process. What were the main concerns getting raised by the members? I think firstly it's right to recognise, Tom, it's been a, a pretty frustrating time for everybody involved, especially members who are sitting on the sidelines waiting for information. And it's been difficult for us to put out communications and, and let members know, you know, on an ongoing basis what, what the, the outcome of these discussions have been because they have been an ongoing negotiation. So until that negotiation is concluded and you've got a, a proposal in front of you, it's very difficult to, to update members. But the types of things that members were concerned about, not surprisingly, you know, the length of the, the proposal, you know, the number of years it was involved, given some of the uncertainties that are around politically, for example, the, the removal of some of the existing, you know, pay terms and conditions. Um, so, th so those were fed back to the, the, the service through the negotiating team through ourselves and directly from employees when the, the, the service went out and engaged with our staff. And not surprisingly, those employees said exactly what we you know, mm. said to the, the negotiators in, in, in that room as well. So it's been, a, it's been a, a, a protracted period of negotiations. However, you have to put that against the context of, you know, we've, we've been criticised in the past for signing up to blank checks and we were absolutely key that we didn't want to do that again. So... You know, these are significant uh, proposals to potentially alter and change the, the long-term roles of a, a firefighter. So that's not something that we're going to enter into lightly. And clearly it's something I think members would expect us to conduct a significant amount of due diligence when we're looking at that and also try and extract the best possible proposals. And that just unfortunately takes as long as it takes. So I think members now are sitting waiting to see what happens next. Now, Matt, that is a key point. Now, it's important to say clearly this is a proposal solely by the Scottish employer. It will only affect members in Scotland. But, of course, we've now got this proposal. Um, it's early December. We're literally less than two weeks away from a general election. So what everyone wants to know is, what's the way forward? Well, Chris, I think it's, it's very well set out the, some of the complexities around it. We've now got an additional problem, which is the general election. And regardless of people's political views, we face two very different prospects uh, in terms of the attitude to public sector investment and public sector pay. Uh, and for example, in one case, uh, a Labour pledge about public sector pay to restore pay in real terms to pre-economic uh, crisis uh, levels. That's, that's, that would clearly alter the whole dynamics of public sector pay negotiations. So we'd be naive if we didn't take account of that. And then a very different uh, prospect if there is, uh, for example, a Boris Johnson-led government. Uh, so the Executive Council took count of that, took account of the, the latest uh, document. There is still quite a lot of debate on the Executive Council about the contents of the, the Scottish Fire Service document. But what we agreed is we would reconvene uh, shortly after the general election and consider the whole thing in the light of the political situation then. OK, so further news will follow straight after the general election. Exactly, that's, and there is also an all-member circular. We'd urge, urge people to read that and discuss with local FBU reps across Scotland. Matt, thanks very much indeed. And Chris, thanks. Now, that circular that Matt referred to is on the FBU website, and that's www.fbu.org.uk. But, of course, for further more immediate updates, you can also follow us on Twitter, and that's simply at FBU National. Till next time, thanks for joining us, and thanks very much, Matt and Chris. Thanks, Tom.